So somebody posted a comment asking me to make a video on the topics that we must study on the MCAT. Now, I'm of the opinion that you must study every single topic, but there is also a concept called the high yield topics. In other words, the topics that are more likely to appear on your exam. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that every single MCAT exam is different. If you take the MCAT exam on a different day from someone else, you're taking a completely different exam. High yield topics are the important concepts that occur often on the MCAT, meaning that it might be more efficient to study these topics first, to study them often, and to understand them inside and out. When I first started making this video, I came up with way too many topics. So I've forced myself to limit it to five topics per section. What that means is that these lists are completely non-exhaustive. But what it also means is that there's no guarantee that any one of these topics is going to show up on your exam. Throughout this process, I'm going to be using this resource here. It's called the Map of the MCAT. I made it. You can click on the link in the description below to download it or check it out. Without further ado, number one, amino acids. You gotta know everything about amino acids, all right? Their names, their structures, polarity, charge, how they move in electrophoresis, what happens to protein structure when you substitute one amino acid for another. You gotta know everything. I personally had five amino acid questions on my bio biochem section. There are a couple resources online that can help you really nail down your amino acids. And those are the amino acid quizzes that you can find in the description below. Number two, the central dogma of biology. The central dogma is that DNA is transcribed to RNA, which is translated into proteins. You're going to want to know every single detail of both of these steps, translation and transcription, from the enzymes that are involved in DNA replication and DNA transcription, to your start codons and stop codons. You don't have to memorize the whole codon list, but you do need to know your start and stop codons. You also wanna know where each of these processes happens in the cell. Number three, enzyme kinetics. You wanna be really familiar with how enzymes work, the thermodynamics of enzymes, how they work as catalysts, and you wanna know how enzymes are inhibited. You wanna be really familiar with the Michaelis-Menten charts. Those are this. Number four, metabolic pathways. You gotta know your glucose pathways inside and out, forward and backwards. You wanna know how many ATPs are produced at each step of the process, how many electron carriers are produced, that's NADH, FADH2, and you wanna know what your rate limiting steps are. You need to know every detail of the main glucose pathways and also the broad strokes of the side pathways. Those are the nucleotide, the protein, and the lipid pathways. For number five, I couldn't decide on a single topic, so I've decided to just list all the other topics that I figure are high yield in bio biochem. That is aerobic metabolism and the oxyhemoglobin curve, the nervous system and action potentials, hormones, your endocrine system, and cell mitosis and meiosis. So that's the bio biochem section. Those are the topics that I consider high yield. Now, moving on to the chem phys section. Chem phys is different from bio biochem. There's less discrete knowledge and more calculations. You have to understand how to use the information that they present you. Because of that, the number one high yield topic to study is your equations and your units. Memorizing this list of equations and chem phys will take you so, so far. Even when you don't completely understand a question, if you know how to plug the numbers into an equation, more often than not, it'll give you the right answer. That being said, there are still topics that I would consider more important to study than others. For physics, that includes electronic structure, periodic trends, atomic decay, and fluids. For chemistry, that means acids, bases, thermodynamics, electrochemical cells, and chemical equilibrium. For organic chemistry, that means functional groups and also nucleophilic substitution. That's SN1 versus SN2. Number five, who could forget lab techniques? 
This is your extraction and distillation, your chromatography, and your electrophoresis. Because the exam is weighted 20% on experimental design, it is so, so important that you know and you understand your lab techniques. Last up, we have our psych soch section of the MCAT. My first high yield topic is theories of emotion. This is how we process emotion and involves theories like the James Lang theory and the Schachter Singer theory, which are different ways of understanding how we process emotion cognitively and physically. Number two, stages of development. These include Piaget's development, Freud, Erickson, and also Kohlberg's moral development. You wanna be able to compare and contrast these and also understand how they stack up against each other. For example, where would a five-year-old be most likely to be in each of these models? Number three, social processes and group behavior. This is how your behavior differs when you're with other people or when you're in a group. Comes up pretty often on practice tests and the MCAT. Number four, attribution theory. This is how we perceive a behavior. Whether we think that a behavior is due to someone's disposition, whether it's because they are just that way, or if it's because of the situation, the environment. Number five, associative learning. This is classic psychology. This is classical conditioning, like Pavlov's dog. You know the story, the dog salivates when he hears the sound of the bell because he unconsciously associates it with food. And also operant conditioning, which is how people's behaviors change in response to rewards or punishments. And I'm gonna punish you if you don't like and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, those are the topics that I consider high yield on the MCAT. I'm gonna stress again that this is the bare minimum. If you wanna do well on the MCAT, you should know every little detail about your high yield topics, but you should also know pretty much everything about everything else. And I know that's not particularly encouraging, but that's just the reality of the exam. You kind of got to know everything about everything. But the high yield topics are a good way to start. Good luck and thanks for watching.